Greetings and welcome to Ask Us Anything, episode number seven. As usual, it's a pleasure to be here on OSM Vision to answer your questions and to share the doctrine of Musabat. Remember, the rules are simple. In order to get your question answered, you have to like it, share it, and then it gets moved to the top because we only have a limited amount of time to get through as many questions as we can. So if you would like your question to be answered, please like it. Also, press the subscribe button so that you can be alerted with all that's happening with us. Yeah, you get the first alert if you subscribe, share and like. We have to thank everyone because each one teach one. We have to thank everyone who's been sending in their questions, who's commenting, who's responding. And so we want to give you a big, warm, heartfelt thank you. Okay, so you may be new to the channel and you don't know what Wusaba is because the questions that we are addressing are relating to Wusaba. Wusaba is our culture and it's also known as Wunuap or Wunupu um, and it relates to everything to help you transform yourself into a supreme being or at least make the attempt to reach as far as possible in terms of elevation as a spiritual being or a multi-dimensional being. Okay, Wu Sabat has been here since the beginning of time. And it's more prevalent now because every 24,000 years, it gets renewed or like our story as Negroid people on the planet gets renewed. And what that means is that we become awake. We remember who we are because Wusabat is a remembering tool, right? It's already encoded in your DNA because we deal with the circumference of information covering everything to do with the unseen world as well as the seen world. A lot of this um, has been covered in our very first video on OSM Vision named um, God, Numbers and the Universe Explained. If you haven't watched that already, I would definitely urge you to go back. In fact, go back and watch all the videos because Sometimes people are asking questions that we have already covered. It is an honour and a pleasure to be here in this day and time, in this 24,000 years where Wu Sabat is now being, you know, felt across the globe. Wu Sabat is brought to us by our spiritual master, the guide known as Parnabab Yanun or most may be familiar with the title Dr. Malachi Z. York. Okay, he is a 720 degrees being, meaning that he has mastered 360 degrees of the physical realm and 360 degrees of what people may term the spiritual realm. And he comes every 24,000 years as a, as a reincarnation of the most intelligent and smart being on the planet. Some know as Tahuti, okay? He's known by many titles, Hermes. He's known as Thoth. Um, he's known, you know, by many titles over the years in different cultures. But he's that supreme being that comes along to raise you up and make you also a supreme being just like himself. Okay, so I'm taking this time out to give an introduction to Wu Sabat for newcomers and to kind of also skip some of the questions that are asked over and over and over again. So Wu Sabat deals with love and unity, yeah, um, the, the cooperation of all sentient beings in terms of harmony on the planet, right? Wu Sabat is a culture, it is not a religion. It predates all religions, especially the monotheistic religions or the Abrahamic religions, which only go back 
to 6,000 years old, right? So that's, we're in 2024 of the Gregorian calendar, so that's 2,024 years. And then we go backwards to BC or BCE, or to 4,000 or 4,004 years ago, and you add the, you know, the 4,000 plus the 6,000, when we round it up, you get 6,000 years which signified the end of the moon cycle because there are four cycles of 6,000 years, a moon cycle, a sun cycle, a moon cycle, a sun cycle of 6,000 years each combined together gives you 24,000 years, which is referred to as an equinox. But then the cycle of 24,000 years starts again. Some people refer to these moon and sun cycles as the gold cycles or the silver cycles, the Aquarian age or the Piscean age. So this is something that is occurring now as of, you know, the year 2000, it's a renewal. And you should be really thankful and blessed to know that you're here in this day and time when this is occurring and that you're able to get all your questions answered and there are different levels. So your journey into spirituality or being awoke or what people term enlightenment may start off with a religion, you know, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and the many flavors of these three monotheistic religions. And what Wu Sabat is, is if you were to take the actual facts or the truth from all of these religions and put them in one basket, um, that would be a part of Wu Sabat. So if you are one that is interested in truth, if you're one that is about facts um, and not belief, because belief is based on um, information that's not confirmed or that is not proven and often deals with death, as in, you know, People term, they talk, they talk about a book and they say, they call it the book of the dead, for example. The book of the dead is the scriptures, you know, the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran. These are the Abrahamic religions, um, the books of those religions, which have expired as of the year 2000. So um, we call them the book of the dead because everyone in them are dead people. People mistake that for the book known as The Coming Forth by Day, which is a, a book that relates to ancient Egypt or what people call ancient Egypt. That's known as the, people call it the Book of the Dead because it was a book that would be often put in the sarcophagus of pharaohs, you know, so it was like a dead man's writing. This is where the term became known as the Book of the Dead. However, Wu Sabat is alive, it's a living entity, much like the planet is a living entity, much like everything on the planet is a living entity in, the, in so far as it has a spirit. And higher beings that vibrate on higher realms have a soul, and you're connected to these higher realms from the physical to the spiritual to the, to the soul to the mental to the etheric realms and many realms and you coexist with them all at the same time, be it that you're vibrating on those frequencies at different, at different vibrations. So a simple way of explaining this is solid, liquid and gases coexist all at the same time. So your physical body is going to be physical. Um, you have liquids within you, your blood, your plasma, um, white blood cells, red blood cells, and then, you know, you're breathing in oxygen or air, which is, you know, thinner in terms of its density. So just wrap this around your head for a moment. You deal with density as the higher vibration, and then from density, things slow down in vibration and become matter, okay? And then from matter, you get atoms, and from atoms, you get cells. Cells combined form organisms, organs, 
right? So your organs are composed of cells. And then these organs will formulate into what you call your body. But there is a, a physical world and there is a, what people term a spiritual world, or we say the etheric world, that coexists. You see, so it's important to realise those levels. So that's density, matter, atom, cells, organs or organisms, and then bodies, okay? And so once you realise that you're composed of all of these, it's a matter of learning the different aspects of you, okay? So um, what Wu Sabat does is it's here to teach you everything you need to know to master all these realms and master the planet, master the physical world. And then as you elevate further, you can start to master, you know, the other realms. All right. And so what we do here is to answer your questions, because honestly, Wu Sabat is the truth. Wu Sabat is the way for this day and time. And if anything else aligns with it, that means it's the truth and it, it will vibrate on the same resonance, yeah, the same frequency. Because when you're dealing with these cells, they're held together by electromagnetism. What is that? Electro deals with electricity and magnetism deals with, see people think that uh, magnet magnetism or uh, a magnet is something in the metal. No, it is not. It's something that the metal can conduct. All right. So when you're dealing with the building blocks of life, you start off with the, the atoms, yeah, which obviously phonetically you can hear Adam. This is where the story of, you know, the biblical story of how things came about from one person called Adam and then, according to them, a rib was taken to form the woman. And they give you how these two people had children, um, Cain and Abel. And then, you know, how Cain killed Abel. But then they can't explain the rest of it. How did the different races come to be? Because scientifically, um, an anthropologists have mapped out the DNA through the Human Genome Project, the 24,000 genes and the 24 trillion cells that make you up. They've mapped this out now. And the story that they tried to give you that Noah <laughs> had children, um, Ham, Jephthah, and I can't remember the other one, but they, they're supposed to be the three races, which is not scientif scientifically true. So what it is, is that the scientists have mapped out that the Homo nelidi and the Homo habilis, it's the oldest and that's the African race. Then you have the second one, which would be referred to as the Mongoloid race or the Denisovan and the Homo florensis. And then finally, you would have what they call the, the, the Cro-Magnon or the Neanderthal, which deals with the Caucasian. And yeah, th this is where we go in, in terms of breaking down things scientifically, spiritually, physically. Basically, we deal with geology, we deal with, um, yeah, we deal with everything. We deal with everything, basically. So that's why we're like, ask us anything. Because we have one amongst us, a being that is a supreme being that has come here to raise you up if you're willing and about truth and want to know the real you, who you really are. Now, of course, when you start to deal with gender, because gender um, deals with the male and female organs in terms of when you're dealing with sexual organs, that's how you start to differentiate in terms of male or female. There are other types of genders, which most of the time people don't talk about, you know, the hemophrodite, the hermaphrodites. You know, um, so you've got the XY and the XX, which deals with the XX being the female, the XY being the male. But you also have other types of beings, which deals with XYX or YXY. And funnily, on the planet, humanoids tend to think they're the most important thing. But you have all types of life forms here. 
You know, you have from the tiniest ants to, you know, beings in the sea, the deep, deep seas, beings in the air. Um, then, of course, other beings that travel here from different places. So we cover not only our planet, we cover our solar system, we cover the galaxy, we go into the universes, the multi or multiverses, the omniverses. And so you have to realise that as a being, you're evolving, um, starting to use more of your brain. So you're not only going to use like 10 or, less, 10 or less percent of your brain. You have the ability with the right triggers or information to tap into your hidden DNA to, you know, what people call, you know, um, junk DNA. Um, you have the ability to tap into this and start to utilize your brain, your brain's capacity. And so you can tap into your higher senses, which relate to your higher beings. This being your intuition, clairvoyance, clairvoyance telepathy and psychometry. All of this we've already explained in previous videos. So it's important that when you're asking your question, you try to really ask questions to do with, you know, things that really matter to you. So with that, um, of course, the woman being the, the one that existed before the male, because as we've explained before, the male is made up of the Y chromosome. So wherever there's a Y that in includes or indicates a male and the Y is a defective X. So the female was here first. This is a hidden secret that males or the men that have run the world or, you know, religious men that have run the world try to hide this fact because gods create other gods and females creating everyone on the planet would be the original gods or goddesses. And before I get into the questions for today, I keep saying it, there are different levels and what people get confused about is one, language, because if you don't know that the scriptures that you're holding in your hand today are just translations um, and depends on how far back you go and which culture you're going to use, you get different languages. So for example, we speak in English. But if you trace where English came from and then look at the books that people are reading in religion, you go back to, depending on which book it is, if it's the New Testament, then you're going to go to the Greek. If it's what they call the Old Testament, which is really the Torah, it's the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Numbers and Leviticus, that's the Torah. That will be in Hebrew. And then you find out that the pioneer of of what people call um, Hebrew comes from the word Ibri, which ties into Abraham, who was called a Hebrew, which is an action or a description when he was crossing over the Tigris and Euphrates River, and he was referred to as a Hebrew or a Ibri. Okay, but that is not a religion. Um, people made it into a religion, but it's an action, and Hebrew itself goes back to the Sumerian tablets. This is where you start to talk about a lot of tablets that have been uncovered, the Sumerian tablets, you know, um, Gilgamesh epics, the Arcadian tablets, um, you know, you, you talk about people like Enkidu, and then you start to talk about the stories of Anu, Enlil, and Enki, his two sons, Arishkigal, and that whole family, you know, um, Murdoch, or Murdoch, you know, so that goes into Sumeria. And then if you were coming from Africa, as opposed to the Mesopotamia region of where today would be like Iraq, um, in Africa, you're going to have ancient, what people call ancient Egypt, or prior to the, what they call the, um, the dynasties, you're going to go to Napata, Moro, and you start to deal with the Pataites, you know, and you start to deal with stories of people like Patar and Bes, Amun, uh, you know, all these beings, Atum, these are families of the Natharu who were in ancient Africa. Okay, so depending on what language you're using, depending on what scripture you're using, depending on how far back you're going, and there was a time when there was no humans on the planet, 
and the evolution of mammals and other beings from the protozoas, the single cell organisms, etc., before life form as we know it evolved from the waters on, and onto land. You know, but we all and everything is connected through ether. Yeah, this is why the etheric realm is so important. So I'm just giving you an overview, a background of a lot of the information we've covered already, and that Wu Sabat is the answer, you know, for a lot of the issues we have on the planet. And so you can free yourself, you can free your mind from being confined to these religious books, because each one claims to be the way and correct. But they tell you, if you don't follow this book and stay within the confines of this book, then you are now a heathen, you're infidel, you're going to hell. Um, they argue about people they have not confirmed to have existed. So there's no point debating and arguing over like people like are all dead. And like I said, the book of the dead is full of dead people. Nothing really changes. But if you're alive, it's futile to argue about Jesus and people that they haven't proven to have existed. We know that the real stories are taken from ancient stories from ancient Africa that work their way through to Europeans, through the Phoenicians, the Sumerians and other beings like, you know, Hindu beings. And of course, we have to also touch on the extraterrestrial um, because when you go far back before this planet and recognise that this planet is but a speck in the cosmos, in the multiverses, as I've mentioned before, the omniverses, then you realise that there are different beginnings. There isn't just one beginning because humans like to say, who was first? Who was at the beginning? The beginning of our star or the sun exploding to form our solar system. That's just a one star. If you look out there into the world, into the cosmos, there are billions and billions of stars who were birthed and have solar systems and have life forms that evolved according to their beginnings, you see. So it's a very complex subject in terms of trying to decipher and break down the spell because what happened is that, especially with the Negroids, we were given foreign religions and were told to worship and follow other people, which was really the last 6,000 years of what we termed the moon cycle, um, where, you know, things started to change and we forgot who we were and we were then told, worship this, look into that direction. You know, people tell you, face a particular direction to, to, to pray to Allah or to God, but you're like, if you're claiming he's omnipotent, omnipresent and he's everywhere, why do I need to face a particular direction? Because anywhere I face, God, Allah would be there. But anyway, I hope that's given you a, a synopsis, a summary, a gist of what Wu Sabat is about. But let's get into the questions and see what um, questions you guys have for today. Okay, first question. Is it possible to manipulate the brain waves of your brain to instantly learn, I think that's meant to be, and download any skills you want? Like if you want to play the piano, is it possible to download that information and manipulate your brain to instantly play the piano like, like an expert. I think this is um, a scene taken straight out of The Matrix, because if you remember the movie The Matrix, when Neo was taken into the simulation, and he was like, downloaded Kung Fu, and all of a sudden he knew how to, you know, to fight with like, like Fishburne. Um, in reality, that sounds nice, but no, it doesn't quite work like that. And this is another important aspect that we must emphasize with Wu Sabat. Wu Sabat is not a, you get dipped in water, a dip you in water religion, and then all of a sudden, all your sins are forgiven. You don't have to do anything. No, Wu Sabat means you have to do some work. You have to study. You have to learn. You can't just expect somebody else to do all the work and come and just save you. So you're there waiting idly, ideally, um, not I-D-O-L, or you do worship idols, as in just spending your time following people like celebrities and so forth and wasting time of your development. 
I'm saying that to say that in relation to the question, yes, these days scientists, even Elon Musk with his companies, they're actually now working on chips and inserting chips into people's brains. And, you know, where is an application for, say, people that have lost their limbs, they can help them. Because remember, when your hand is lost or chopped off or any of your limbs, you still have the etheric counterpart because you're actually dealing with the energy. Remember, I mentioned that you have the physical, but you also have the other realms or the other counterparts of you. So you can still react with that energy because you're dealing with the, the frequency. So you can actually put an artificial um, protestic, prote I can't pronounce the word, uh, basically an artificial arm. And, and then because the energy is still there, you can then interact with it if you know how um, to make to, to move your hand or use your hand now in terms of that being downloaded and then you can play the piano you have to remember that your body is the, the the part of your physical body is what you use to interact with this physical realm so the muscles will have to be trained so you can have information but that information has to then interact so for example to be a piano player which i'm one um and the master teacher explained many 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 times that if a piano player can tell you that everyone can play the piano right well at least everyone who has working fingers um but only a piano player will know how to utilize the information to then play the piano so you can't escape that process of developing the muscles and the muscles then tie into the information and what people call muscle memory and so this is where people say practice make perfect but it, that's, it's actually perfect practice that makes perfect so if you're practicing something you have to practice it perfectly or in a particular way so to go back to your question Yes, you can have information. Loads of people in the world are giving out information now. And most of it comes from the information the master teacher, Panda Babianung, Dr. Malachi Ziyuk, has bestowed upon the planet anyway. Not to say there aren't other people that have written or put out information. The difference is applying that information with a culture, um, and it's not just regurgitating information or sounding good and giving out information but there are secrets and rituals and things that have been passed down from generation to generations and some of that is sacred and some of that is only passed down from mouth to ear through certain orders and because really you have to be trustworthy it's like like i always say you can't give a baby a loaded gun and and you have to be responsible and make sure you've elevated to a point where you're not given information like, you know, when the information of how to make the atomic bombs was, was given and it was used to almost destroy the entire planet. So, yes, um, information is great. You can download information. However, you still have to do the work to train your muscles just like a child. You come here as an etheric being, but you have to go through the process of growing the limbs, coming out, learning how to use those limbs, you start to crawl, then you start to stand, then you wobble, then you fall, then, and all of this is designed to build your muscles and then you, you're able to go from not moving, just being on the floor, to crawling, to standing up, to walking, to learning to talk. So this is a process. Life works in cycles. It's not a, a magician like the the biblical God, he just says, let there be light and let there be this and let it light. It, it, it doesn't, nature doesn't work that way. With nature, you have a seed. This is why we always explain, because the question of who's the creator keeps coming up. And how, people ask, how can you create something from nothing? The answer is in the word something, because you have to, the sum of a thing and if you have a seed, let me give you an example. If, if you have a seed, that's something. But when you plant it and nurture it with the elements, the water, the sun, the soil, 
that something then grows into other things like the tree itself, the branches, the leaves and fruit if, if you know, it bears fruit. So these are now things that have come out of a thing, a something which was the seed. So in the same token, you as a being are grown, you know, you're grown through your mother's, um, you know, being in your mother's womb. And, and then you come out and you learn and then you, you, you gradually learn the things you need to in terms of locomotion and being able to move. And so, yes, in terms of your brain, your brain is a muscle. The information which comes from out formation, outside in, is then um, interacting with what we call the mind or you tap into the mental reservoir, which is where information is accessed but then the muscle has to be trained and if you study and read and do these things that trains your muscle and your muscles you're like you're like a, um, you're a holographic computer you're actually a computer a quantum computer for that matter so every computer has a simple computer system will have input and output it will have a processor or a CPU a central processing unit and then it will have memory. There are different types of memory. So you'll have ROM, which is read-only memory, and you have RAM, which is random access memory. And then you'll also have what we call a hard drive or a hard disk drive, where you store information. And these systems all interact and work together, right? So you're the same where you have subconscious memory and you have conscious memory. You have your mind, or your brain that interacts with the mind, which has electricity, and the electricity is really by the frequencies. And so, yes, you can't just skip and just get information and all of a sudden you can play the piano. Um, I know that these beings, 60 for forces and 60 for beings are working on replacing things, natural nature things with artificial things, but that's devilishment because it, it deceives you. Like, for example, you know, um, the food, you know, you're getting GMO foods and you're getting things that are not natural. And of course, they're going to have a different impact because everything ultimately interacts with your DNA. So um, it may look the same, but it, it's fake and it's not going to have the same thing. So if you look at a real banana, which may be this small through natural nature and the nutrients and everything that come from that banana to give you sustenance, you make a fake one that's this big, looks yellow, but doesn't really give you the same nutrients or have the same impact on your being, you know? So yeah, there's no shortcuts. Uh, let's keep going. Can you show how to do the Ankh ritual as showed in the nine principles and other spiritual rituals for us Nuwapians? Um, I don't have the nine principles on me um, and Really, when it comes to our rituals and the sacred things that we do, um, this, is, this is why you need to be on the inside. This is why you need to be involved. Um, people think they can have their own version or their own form of Wusabat and just stay on the outside. Um, yes, we share and give as much information as we possibly can, but some information is sacred. Rituals and things that we do, we give those out to our community members and people who take it seriously enough to want to, because if you want to really be raised by Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, then you have to read the books, you have to study, you have to be part of the community. And that doesn't mean you have to be only in one place to do that, but at least you're putting into practice what he's teaching. Um, I mean, we have our greetings and the rituals and things on, on our website for members who join. Um, and yeah, you know, we don't just kind of like do this online because where does it stop? Um, but yeah, you can, you can actually go to any of the communities and, and, and log into our websites as a member and you'll get that information. You've said in the past Q and A's that when a family member dies, they must come back through their family lineage. If we develop ourselves where we can interact with the other realms, can we find our family members 
who return to the planet. Remember, I mentioned last week, please learn how to ask your question. Um, I didn't say you must come back. What I have said in the past and what we've been taught is that you have 24 to 24,000 chances or cycles to perfect your being so that you can return to what we call in English all, right? Or the all, or the all expanding. Because ultimately, your journey here is to master this realm and to learn and then elevate, master the next realms. And you will remain in limbo in some of these realms until you've actually mastered and, for lack of a better word, um, passed or kind of like elevated past that. So, for example, on this planet, you've got to master desires. You've got to master the physical world. You've got to be able to burn out desires and things that hold you down to this realm. And once you've mastered that, then you move on, on to the next realms. And you can become, you can be in this realm, but have mastered the realm and you're now pure mental being or more spiritual until the time when you cross over. Because from the moment you're born, it is already in your telomeres, in your DNA, so in your genes, is already designated when you're going to cross over. You know, so this is why we say don't waste the time. Use that time wisely to learn, to study about your other, you know, beings and more higher vibrational beings. So I'm not saying you must come back. You come back if you have a mastered the realm or if you've done something that is stopping you from progressing because think about it let's say the highest realm is the most pure most harmony most truth most um, righteous place to be right in order to be there if you are tainted or if you're going to come and desecrate that harmony that peace that unity you wouldn't it wouldn't make sense for you to be allowed in because you will disturb the flow of those beings who have elevated and are in that celestial be in celestial realm in that way. It's like, just for description, it's like if you, if you had um, a house, it was all white with, you know, settees were white, carpet white, everything's clean, pristine clean. Would you allow someone to walk into that room with dirty boots or you know, just like desecrate and make the place smelly. So when we as beings are trying to elevate to be amongst the Natharu, the highest beings on the highest vibration, we have to realize that we have to eradicate a lot of the way we think, which has come by way of six ether forces, which has come by way of us being misled, misinformed, given the wrong information. Um, some people may have, you know, part of it, we eat in bad food, sometimes not by choice, just because of what it's around. Um, smoking, drinking, you know, sexual activities, drugs, um, all kinds of stuff. So you make yourself not worthy. So first thing you have to do is clean yourself inside out. And that's not just physically, it's also mentally, spiritually, your thoughts. Um, you know, do you get angry, your vibration, your frequency? So um, you come back and you're given chances to perfect your being. This is, this is what religions really were about. It was discipline to get you to perfect your being. Learn discipline, learn how to treat people, how to get along, how to work with people, you see, so that you're not going to have negative thoughts. You're not going to be the bum note. You know, you're like if you're playing a song and everything is in harmony, so it's, 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 it's a mellow song and then you just hear a bum note or someone just messes it up, you know. That's what we're trying to eradicate. So in terms of your ancestors are connected to you anyway because you say when you've developed um, and you have to come back through your family lineage, yeah, because that deals with DNA, blood and the, the, the resonance that you are connected to. Um, but your, your generations, if you even think about it, if we go back to the first person, the first common ancestry, everyone comes out of that. So you're actually family anyway, completely all over the world in terms of it may be weaker and weaker and weaker and then you may have 
hybrids and um, you know new beings that are created unnaturally, but they still have to take something that's already in existence to create that unnatural thing or the formula, like I said before, the DNA that make up the banana, like the chromosomes, they'll have to take that and, and then create a fake version, you see. So, um, yeah, so that's why when you say, can we find our family members who return to the planet? You are. This, this is the whole point of what we're saying, that you are connected to your DNA family via blood, etherically as well. So this is why calling on anyone else or trying to pray to anyone else who doesn't have your best interest at heart doesn't make any sense. So you have to connect to your, you know, your mother first, which is the going back to the mitochondrial DNA, which is the strongest link to you because your mother gave birth to you. So by going through that to your grandma, to your great grandma and so on and so on, you have a link to connect with them and then they can help you. So you're dialing the right telephone number. If you're, right, if you're dialing the wrong number, trying to get help from someone else or something else, and you're dialing the wrong number, they're not going to connect with you, they're not going to hear you. So yes, you are connected to them. Um, and in terms of knowing if, who they are, you know your family. Um, you, like, if you're having an experience and you're connected to your, your family, your, you know, your mum, your dad, auntie, whoever, you will feel and know them and ask them to guide you, give you signs, show you things and do things that only you will know that relates to them, if you knew them, you know, so, and they will give you signs, you, you will know. Can a person steal another person's destiny and or blessings, like swap life with someone? Can someone steal another person's identity on a soul and experience level? And if so, how does the person that, was stole from receive what is theirs and or get on their right life path. Yes, that's possible in the sense that they can't, because genetically, via DNA, by blood, like I've already mentioned, they can't, right? But what they can do is trick you and set you on the wrong path. So, this is what Wusabat is here to do, to break these, these lies, these generational lies, these, these curses that are placed on people who have wronged the world, wronged the planet, but they get you to partake or become involved in them. That's why, you know, the book of Revelations, I think, um, 18, 2, talks about, come out of her, my people, so that you will not partake of, you know, their sins, meaning that, what the European and the Caucasian has done is, for example, uprooted the African race and pretend to be their gods, give them, give them images to worship. And the same with, you know, the Arabs. And so everyone is connected to their bloodline. But if you're tricked to go in a different direction, that can take you off the path and delay you. So if you were traveling to get to a destination and you asked somebody, how do I get there? And they gave you the wrong information or gave you the wrong direction. They could actually send you back miles away from where you're trying to get to. And you will then eventually, if you keep trying and trying to figure it out, you will find your way back. And maybe you will meet people who are going to give you the correct directions and say, you know, that person sent you in the wrong direction. You actually need to go back that way and continue the way you were going. And in fact, here's the straight and quicker path to get there. So I'm using that as an analogy to say that that's what's happened with people on the planet. Extraterrestrials have camouflaged themselves by way of the books in the Bible, the Quran and religious books to say they are gods and that you should worship them, sacrifice to them, you know, blood sacrifices, human sacrifices, do all these things so that you will get to a place called heaven. And if you don't do that, you're going to go to a place called hell, none of which they have confirmed. And have you doing rituals and worshipping and doing things that you're channeling your precious time and energy towards them. But 
Wu Sabat has come along to say, no, 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 no. That's misinformation. That is not correct. And we walk you through it. We go from page, the first page, the cover of the book, whether it's, you know, the Bible, the Quran, and we walk you through it from beginning to end, from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelations, from the Al-Fatiha, from the first book of the first prayer in, in the Quran, all the way, you know, and we do this so that we can show you the misinformation, the lies, the misconception, the misinterpretations, and show you that you have to study, you have to check this out for yourself. Your soul is your responsibility. If you hand it over to somebody else, then that's your fault. You may do it ignorantly without knowing, but then when Wu Sabat comes along and shows you, look, wake up, you're being misguided, get on the right path, connect with your ancestors, these are the rituals you need to do. This is what's going to get you to elevate, and this is going to free you from the bondage of relying on the jinns or the allegiance, giving your allegiance to these, these fake gods and extraterrestrials and knowing who you are, not what you have become or what you have accepted, which can be leading you in the wrong path. So yes, in terms of they can trick you, send you off, but if you are genuinely interested and have that inclination to find the truth, you will find your way. And this is one of the things we're doing to help humanity find their way. If you're somebody who was not interested anyway and you rather live in ignorance, you don't want to know the truth, you want to pretend, wear all the perfumes, wear the garms, you know, go to the mosque and to the church and just worship material things, claim there's nothing else, that's, that's your choice too. And so yes, that way they will steal your soul because that's what it's designed to do. And your soul is an energy source which can be utilized, you know, for, for many things. All right, let's keep going. Rahul Bhatt, I am most grateful for you and your affirmation. I was able to find a class in Trinidad and I appreciate the time you take to spread this knowledge, peace and love to the family. Wadu. Tawat um, Devon Sinanan. Yeah, it's good that people all over the world, this is what we're doing. We're, we're Wu Sabat is spreading all over the world and you know the master teacher told us this would happen and each one teach one so you can read one book you know from Dr Malachi Z York and that will clear up a lot of confusion for you and the chaos. Um, there will be those who wrestle and fight but you're never going to win because truth is truth, truth will always prevail and so um, yeah there's always going to be agreeable and disagreeable um, it's more about you. What's, where do you stand? What's your decision? You know? Okay, let's keep going. Thank you for having this space for us to ask questions about whatever. Definitely a place where the collective energy gives space for us to share the quest for truth exists here. I'm grateful for it. We're grateful to you. Um, and yeah, thank you for that comment. Thanks for your kind words. It's always good when we get feedback you know, that we're making a positive change. Please speak on prayer and worship. Is it necessary? Um, it's necessary for those who need it. Um, there's nothing wrong with, before you start your day, to give gratitude to your ancestors, to thank them for guiding you, helping you. And also at the end of the day, because you may have gone out, done things, and before you lay to rest, um, without knowing if you may wake up the next day, um, it's good to also give gratitude um, and, it, and it calms you down as a way of reflecting. And you could do this and meditate and things like that. So prayer um, is the art of talking and not listening. And meditation is the art of being silent and receiving affirmation into information. Now, what happens is that the religious world, as they try to do with everything, is try and have a monopoly on what truth is and say, you should pray like this. You should face that way and pray. You should raise your hands and pray. You should 
prostrate, you should do this and do that. And they give you all this choreography. And so people have got the wrong information about what prayer is. In our culture, we use taful or tafulat um, or uh, ashutat, which deals with communication with the deities or communication with your ancestors. Um, most people who have, give, have been given a religious form of prayer is really about begging, begging God or Allah or someone to give you things. So it's always, they're just talking, 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 talking in their heads and saying, can I have this, can I have that? Some even pray for ill will and harm to be done to others. So worship, again, you should, why are you worshiping anyone or anything? We do not worship. The word actually comes from a word called warship and it goes into a bigger story, which I'm not going to go into today, but it's the warship of the Meldekians. I've explained this before on the, um, the formation or the crash of Nibiru. Uh, well, not Nibiru itself, but the crash of Nibiru into a planet called Meldic. And, you know, um, so that the warship, that's where that originated from, the warship of the Meldekians who were retaliating and they went into war because they thought they were being attacked. So worship, um, no, we, what we do is an inner journey, connecting with your inner being and then from that connecting with your ancestors and giving reverence to nature. We are known as animist because we recognise the power and the forces of nature, which are known as nine ether, okay? And nine ether personifies in vegetation in natural nature so yes we give reverence to the sun because we understand that you know the elements the sun the water the soil um, and we had deities that represented these elements by way of their personalities and their characters so we recognize them for that yeah but we don't pray or worship any idols or any you know specific man or being um, of course, your, what you call your gods will be your deities as in your ancestors and you can give reverence and respect to them and ask them for help and for guidance. But no, we don't worship like men or pray to, to um, stones or, you know, carvers or anything like that. All right. OK. Um, so please speak on prayer and worship. Is it necessary? It's necessary to you if you find or feel that you need it. Um, but if you don't, then it's not necessary. Okay? Because if you're in tune and in vibration with nature, for example, take an ancient um, people, village somewhere in the most remote parts of, you know, the world in Africa or somewhere in the jungle, somewhere that have never read the Bible or Quran, never been influenced by religion, their, their way is in tune with nature. They get up and they do what they have to do and they're in tune with nature. So would they go to hell and all these things that man-made books are, are telling you because they've never read your book or don't belong to your group? Think about it. Wu Sabat is very logical. Wu Sabat makes sense. You have to make things make sense. All right? Okay. I have two, three questions. Okay. What can you say about eating eggs every day? Is soft the Atlantean real and uh, innumerable tablets? Okay, I think, what would be, well, when it comes to diet, people are at different stages. Um, and if you're a vegan, for example, then you wouldn't consume animals or the byproducts of animals, which eggs would be one. And if you really think about what an egg is, um, an egg is the beginning of life in terms of, you know, um, a fetus will grow from the egg. And so, yeah, um, we don't, well, it depends on your diet. If you're vegan, then you're not going to consume animal byproducts or animals, so you wouldn't consume eggs. Um, I don't eat eggs, I, I don't eat dairy products, so um, 
what's the question? What can you say about eating eggs every day? It depends on the person's diet and why they need it. Is it for medical reasons? Um, you can be a vegan, you can be a vegetarian, you can be a meat eater or a seafood. It all depends, but we advocate not to eat things that have parents. Um, and so eggs would be considered the process of a baby chicken, all right? Um, yeah, so yeah, we, we don't eat eggs, but there are people who do, um, and that's down to them in terms of diet. You have to work your way into the best diet that's for health. Do you eat for taste or do you eat for nutrition? And how, what, does, what effect does it have on you? The second part was, yeah, I mentioned thoughts already. That's Tahuti. Um, he's known by many names. And yes, he wrote the, I think what you've written there, which is, is the Emerald Tablets. Yes, he wrote the Emerald Tablets. Um, okay, I think I've answered that. Rahul Batsaken and all the brothers and sisters out there, my question is, between all the voices we could hear as our ancestors are speaking to us, how can we distinguish the voices of our direct parents who crossed over from the others? Yeah, um, this is something that um, Chris Mafolo 2110, this is something you have to work at, you know. Um, just like anything else, if you've never come across it, if you've never even considered the fact that you're hearing voices in your head, um, I've explained on a previous video that you have a radio in your head. And if you've never um, stopped to think about where are these voices coming from? Who's speaking? Why am I getting in this message? So it takes time for you to silence the voices that are not your own or that are not familiar to you or familiar spirits. Um, so, and how you do that is you constantly eradicate voices that are telling you to do the wrong things. And you know that because you have something called intuition. And so when you're about to make a decision or do something, if you hear a voice that tells you something that is not sitting well with you, then you silence that voice. So, for example, if a voice keeps telling you to do something that's bad for your health and you say, you know what, I don't want to listen to that voice, you're going to silence that voice. We've explained many times about your 29 or less personalities, meaning that you're made up of four generations of beings from yourself going backwards four generations. And so the reason we say 29, because altogether there, that will be 30 people or 30 personalities. And because you're alive, you would subtract one, so that becomes 29 personalities. And if your mother or father are alive, you subtract those. The rest will be those that you're hearing voices from. And this is why it's good to learn about your family tree, learn about, know who your mother was, who her parents were, and bo on both sides. So as you go down the four generations, as you know the characters of your family, like uncle, I don't know, say, uncle John used to be an athlete, or, you know, just learn about your family, if you can, as much as possible. Then when you're doing something like, let's say you become a very good athlete and you trace it and, oh, my uncle used to be an athlete. That may be where that DNA is coming from, those genetics. Um, so over time you will learn and you know your parents or you should know your parents. You should take time to spend time with your mother, your father, get to know them. I know relationships sometimes break up um, and you have to build and work on them, but learn them, so learn about them so that you know how they think and how they behave and the kind of things they like and the things they don't like. So when they do cross over and they're making contact with you, and speaking through you, you will be able to recognize their voice. Um, and when many people would tell you, like, I, I know people whose you know, parents have recently passed, and they would be like, I know, I can, I can feel, I can sometimes even smell, um, you know, they'll give you signs and things that you know is them. So you have to learn through silencing the voices that are not of your familiar spirits, and then gradually, you, you learn the different personalities. You can even do 
things like we've been advised, um, you know, like give them like different colours to distinguish them so you know who is who or give them names that you can remember um, and eventually you will start to, to work it out. All right. Everything is energy. Okay, so never seen, okay, there's another question before. Never seen the Holy Ghost touch an elder in the church or someone in a wheelchair. Can't fake it anymore when you get old because the fake four could be the last four. You hear that's so funny. That's so true. Official big yeah. Yo. Yeah, um, that's so interesting because, yes, what he's basically saying is that, you know, these churches that catch the Holy Ghost, um, when, when they're touched and they start shaking and doing the dance and then they, they fall and foam and fall on the floor and all that, what he's saying is he's never seen that happen to people in a wheelchair or the elder in church because they know they can't fall like they used to when they were young anymore and that might be their last breath. And it's a very interesting point because what happens is, I have to tell you, I remember one, when I was young, my... When I, a long time ago, I think my mother took me to a church, one of these, yeah, Holy Fire churches, and they were um, we're catching the Holy, the Holy Ghost, and I was watching everyone, and I've been in a, a lot of congregations when everyone starts shaking, and you know, it's like it's like the <laughs> the body popping, um, where they pass it on, and then everyone starts acting. I was like, I'm not feeling anything. This is not real. This is all acting. And then the, the, you know, the pastor will come and try and push you and push you on your forehead and try and make you like get into it. And it was like, nah, these people are acting, you know, so that's kind of funny. Um, next, everything is energy. And if everything is energy, I hear you. I appreciate how you approach these questions. I'm here. Thank you. Yeah, uh, ultimately, everything is energy. Different forms of energy, different vibrations, just if nothing else, remember what I said at the beginning, yeah, where you, you, you got density, um, different density levels, then you come down to slowing the vibration down to matter, yeah, things are formed of matter, and there's matter on different levels, and then from, from, the, um, from the matter you get to the atoms, atoms are now the building blocks of life, and then from these building blocks of atoms, cells are formed, and then the cells form organs or organisms and then they, they, you know, form into bodies or to material, physical things. Um, if you remember that and remember that as different levels of energy and vibration and they're held together by magnetism, um, as I explained, uh, electromagnetism because you're dealing with electric. When you look at the, you know, like hydrogen, for example, hydrogen, you have um, one electron, one proton, and you're dealing with the, the electricity, the electron that's orbiting, yeah? So that electricity is held together in its center by ether, yeah? That's like the glue on, the glue of the universe. And um, it's called tachyon energy. And so then the different amounts of atoms that are added, you know, form more and more um, kind of, you know, organisms and things. So it goes down in vibration from physical, solid, liquid, gas, ether, all right? Um, it has also been educated, it has always been education. I read the questions exactly as they are, so excuse me. It has always been educated to listen to you. As a curious soul, what are your books would you recommend to read as a beginner? And also if they are available in Ghana, because I am in Sierra Leone and I really want to study and practice the teaching. Yeah, um, you know, we're really doing our best to open um, bookstores all over the world and chapters and, you know, communities all around the world so that people can have easier access to Wusabat and to the many scrolls that Pana Babiano and Dr. Malachi Z. York has you know, authored. Um, so the best you can do at the moment is find the closest one to you, but we are also online, unitedsabeansworldwide.com. Recently, the website has been very active, and so 
you know, bear with us because you, you know what it is. When so many people are trying to get onto the website, um, the resources get strained. I mentioned before, you know, the CPU, etc. So we have to, we're, we're upgrading because the traffic is, is, you know, increasing. But yeah, go on that website, go to the contact us page, look at the stores, look at the nearest one in your area, look if they've got a website, order online or order from the main websites, um, unitedsabiansworldwide.com or from us here in the UK, nashat.co.uk um, and we will ship it out to you wherever you are. Unfortunately, yes, the shipping can sometimes be costly if you're international, um, but we also do classes every week for free. Um, people keep asking us to do more, but you know, we have so much work going on that um, if you support the channel, support us, you know, do whatever you can to support us. We do classes every Saturday from 7 p.m. UK GMT time to 9.30 p.m. Um, this is on Zoom, on Clubhouse and physically in our location um, in 101 Church Street, Croydon, CR01RN. The information will be in the comments. Um, so we do the classes every Saturday. We do these um, OSM Vision Ask Us Anything every week. We have an episode. We're also on the radio on Tuesday. So that's at least three times a week. And that's just us. There are family and brothers and sisters all across the world doing classes on Clubhouse on YouTube. Just search Woosabat, search Noirpians, search Sabians, Sabians, search Dr. Malachi Z. York, um, you'll find us, you know. Um, so yeah, if you want to order the books, go online. If you don't have a bookstore or somewhere near your vicinity, all right? Um, it's good that you really want to study and practice what's about and teach. Yeah, everyone needs to teach this information as much as possible. Tremendously powerful message for humanity. The truth will prevail through God people. Again, you see, when you say God people, that can um, separate people because which God are you talking about? And why, why does everyone feel the need to be like, we're God's people? Um, it naturally happens, you know. If you're teaching truth, if you're vibrating with truth and harmony in terms of nature, um, you, you, you'll be on the same resonance frequency. You know, we don't try to segregate people. Um, During this in encounters with these beings, firstly, are you aware you're male or female? Second, or the beings, do they have specific sex? Again, that's another reminder to ask questions clearly. During this encounters with these beings, I don't know which beings you're referring to. If you're talking about extraterrestrials, firstly, are you aware you're male or female? Again, I don't understand. Is, um, are you, yeah, you, you must be aware if you're male or female. And if you're talking about when you're not in the physical skin suit, then gender is not the same because you're dealing with uh, an energy, a vibration or a being that is without the physical human body. Um, the beings, do they have specific sex? Sex deals with the, the sexual organs. Um, you can reproduce in a different way without sex or without the way we reproduce over here. So for example, well, let me explain that because it may sound confusing. If you have water in one um, container and you separate that water into different containers and you keep separating, is that not reproducing? So if you have a form of energy and you separate that energy into different parts and you could have a particular resonance or a vibration or a frequency which may be perceived as positive and you can have another one which may be perceived as being negative um, but both are necessary for balance so you can have reproduction in terms of energy beings splitting like single cells splitting so reproduction is not always of a sexual nature yeah so um, but there are 
beings that are as real in their realm, they have their form of communication, form of transportation, um, just like we do here in this physical environment. We, we, we have to utilize the, the, um, the elements and the, the place where we're at, you know, so it's the same. If like you're in the water, you're gonna, you know, you're in an environment that needs um, gills and lungs you know, to be able to breathe on the water and so on. So it all depends on the being, the, um, the type of environment you're in. You know, fire within fire, you know, but if you put something that is not on the same frequency as the fire, it will do what? It will consume it, you know. So I hope that answers that question. I try to make sense out of often when there's nonsense in terms of it's not making sense to me. Always oh, vision. Can you speak more on the predator beings and f few? I think that's furry spiritual beings. Is their depiction in the movies accurate? The yeah, the predator being. Um, if you go back and get hold of or see if you can source it online, the book called um, "The Man from Planet Risk," where the master teacher Panda Babian and Dr. Malachi Z York first mentioned different types of extraterrestrials. Not first, but it was one of the early books where he showed you pictures of the Predator. And then the movie came out and it looked exactly like that. You have to remember what I keep saying, that these beings can influence or telepathically influence beings like producers and directors um, that would you know, come up with it. So everything is within the mental reservoir and you can tap into that and pull information. Some call it the Akasha Records and so on. But yes, the Predator, um, they, they make the movies out of information that's put out or beings that telepathically influence, you know, producers, directors, writers, and so on. Um, and the furry ones, are, are, again, are you referring to the shaggy beings? Um, when you say furry one, again, you can get a book called Bigfoot, um, which we have. By the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, that explains, um, you know, about these shaggy beings that come from, you know, the Assyrians um, and so forth. So you had the black one, the yellow fur, and the red fur. Um, someone asked about books. Obviously, we put out a book called um, The Spiritual, Fast Track Your Spiritual and Conscious Journey, which helps a newcomer to quickly kind of like grasp information and then it, it leads you down the path of the many books by Dr. Malachi Z. York and recommends a number of books that deal with specific aspects. Um, so, you know, he covers everything above and under the sun. All the books are written, most of them are written based on questions that people ask. And this is why it's so important to raise your consciousness and vibration so that you can ask questions that are going to elevate us. We need to really graduate from religion. Um, you need to master it, you need to know as much as you can, but then you have to then move further beyond that because religion would be like your kindergarten information. And, you know, people use the acronym for the Bible, you know, um, basic information before leaving earth. Yeah, so you have to elevate from that, you know, to, to more higher, knowledge and consciousness and this is what Wusaba helps you to do. Right, uh, has any scientist been to any other planet like Saturn or Pluto? Um, I don't know which scientist you're referring to um, but the thing about these types of questions is that as I keep explaining you can travel to many places without your physical body you know like astral projection um, during what you call sleep time, your other parts, your other counterparts can visit other realms. And this is all based on how spiritual you are, how much you spend your time in terms of pondering, thinking, meditating. People can travel in their meditation and visit other realms. So I can't speak for anybody in particular in terms of have they been to another planet like Saturn or um, Pluto, but I know many scientists um, I've mentioned before with people like Elon Musk, um, they're trying to space travel and go to places and 
you know, Europa and to the, the Goldilocks and many, many places. So, um, again, you'd have to be, be specific. And I, I can't speak for any scientist that I know that says I've been to Saturn or Pluto physically or, you know. But again, read the Man from Planet Risk book. Read um, Are There UFOs in Your Midst? Um, we've got many books that cover some of these subjects. Why in the Northern Hemisphere does hurricanes spin clockwise and in, in then the Southern Hemisphere, typhoons spin counterclockwise? Cable guy, Marco, 8510. It's actually the other way around. What you have to remember is that the planet Earth, um, even though it's on an orbit around the sun, it also has something called nutation which is how it's spinning, right? And the spin is not purely circular because it, it has a wobble, right? So this is known as the, the nutation. And every realm has its own nutation. So when the planet is on its, on its axis, remember it's on a 23 degree axis and it's spinning within its nutation as well as spinning as in the orbit around the sun. Because it's spinning, um, you have the equator, which will be like in the middle. And if you, if you imagine the globe, you'll have the top, the no northern hemisphere, you have the south or the southern hemisphere, and then you have the equator in the middle. And if you were traveling in that direction, the middle will be the fastest. And the top, um, if you put something there and let's say you had a ball and you dropped it at the top and it was spinning, it will roll off in that direction because of the, the spin. And the same at the bottom, it will roll that way. The best way of trying to get this, because I like to simplify things sometimes so people can grasp it. Um, in the UK, we used to have these buses that to get on, they had a, a section at the back which was open. I think they've got rid of them now because like if you wanted to catch the bus as a young healthy person or you wanted to get off before the bus reached a particular bus stop, because of the way it's traveling, you'd have to time the trajectory right. So if you were gonna jump off, you have to time it so that you can jump off and not spin and fall and drop um, or jump on because if you get it wrong, you know, you can have a major accident. It's the same way, another example, when you're on a merry-go-round and you're spinning yeah, and, and you want to get off. There are other people still spinning, but you want to get off. You know when you jump off, you kind of have to time it so that even though it's spinning that way, when you jump, you don't want to get thrown off. So you jump in a particular way so you can be safe. Well, when you look at that, when tornadoes, because the pressure that is pushing it will make them spin and evolve in a particular direction like that or the other way. So that's, what hap that's what's happening with why they're spinning clockwise or counterclockwise, all right? Um, these are things, again, some of these types of questions you can actually, you can Google, um, go on YouTube and actually watch videos that will explain what I've just said. So it's just, just to do with the, the way the pressure is pulling that tornado and the way that the planet is spinning, all right? Um, Alex Kama, I think. Thanks for answering our questions and your time. We are talking over 1,000 plus books. That will be very expensive for most of us to buy all. If possible, can you convert the books to digital format and have a paid monthly membership? That way it could be a mutual benefit for both your team, masters, and learners. Yeah, um, I don't think, I don't know of any one single person who can claim to have read all the thousand books. So we're all um, learning as much as we can, and it's about what you can get hold of and what you're able to get. And this is why we have free classes, because we do recognize that not everybody will have access to the books. So we have free classes Literally, every single day of the week, you could find a class around the world with, you know, Nuwapians teaching Wusabat. 
on social media, on Facebook, um, Clubhouse, I've mentioned on Zoom. So you have access to a lot of information. And ideally, we would like to get to a point where the books could be distributed freely. And it's happening anyway. A lot of people are sharing the books that they've actually bootlegged, bootlegged um, in terms of, you have to remember that it is intellectual property of the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York. And with intellectual property, you should obtain permission first because you could be liable for, do you know what I mean, infringement of someone's intellectual property. However, people are still PDF in the books and sharing them on all kinds of platforms. And I would warn you to be careful of that. But we would like to get to a point where the information, the master teacher always gave out books freely. But the thing is, we give out the knowledge freely. But you have to remember that in order to produce a book, you have to get paper. You have to have printing costs. You have to have, you know, like marketing and distribution. Um, people have to proofread it. People have to do the binding and put it together. So there are costs associated with producing books. And at the very least, those costs would have to be met, you know, in terms of to make it viable because, you know, if, if we were able to produce those books without all these extra costs, then we would give them out freely. And, you know, you, you do get many books are given out to people freely. But to answer your question, focus on what you can have access to. Because humans always like to focus on what they can't do as opposed to what they can do. If you can only get hold of one book, have you mastered that book? Two books, three books, just get the ones that are available to you because there are certain books that we mentioned that are now classic books that came out many years ago, like we mentioned The Holy Tablets and The Man from Planet Risk and certain books that are very hard to get hold of now. And people are exploiting people as well by selling the books at ridiculous prices. I've seen like The Holy Tablets online for like a thousand dollars, six hundred dollars, you know. Um, so when it's available, get hold of it because when, once it becomes more valuable in terms of it's rare to get hold of, then you're going to be paying a lot more. And, you know, you just got to remember that new books are coming out all the time. The master is constantly giving us new information. So in terms of logistics, you can't print the old books when you've got the new books to print. So this is something that the more we spread, the more that people help, the more people get involved in, in the work. Like I said, Wusabat is not about you just being lazy, you actually have to use your brain, you have to think, you have to study, you have to reason, you have to apply what you're learning. It's not just, oh, I've become born again, so I can go back and sin and do whatever I do in the world because somebody else is gonna, because somebody else has come and died for my sins, they remove sin from the world, in the case of what they say about Jesus, but yet there's still sin in the world. Uh, they, came, they, they came to save you, but yet they themselves, were, they didn't save themselves. Um, I know when people hear this, they might feel offended, but these are the realities. These are the things that you have to think about and ask questions like, does it make sense? Make it make sense. If God can get rid of all the evil on the planet, all the sins by clicking his finger, whether it's, you know, the Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim, Allah, they can go kun fire kun and everything is good. Why don't they do it? Because the reality is that's misinformation. That's these fake gods, fake extraterrestrials that are passing themselves off as they know everything and can do everything. There's no way in the scriptures that says God knows everything. To know something is after it has happened. This is why even when he was so-called creating man, he said he created different things and then he was like, this is good. And he saw that it was good. Do you know what I mean? Like these are physical attributes of, of a physical being. 
and then when he created man, he grieved him, you know. He, he didn't like his creation. Why didn't you know it was going to turn out bad if you know everything, you know. So God does not know everything, and that's why there are mistakes in all the monotheistic religions and scriptures. And when you start to ask questions where they can't answer them, they say you're a troublemaker, you're blaspheming, you know, you're infidel, you're a gentile, all these names, name calling, they result to when you, when you defeat people mentally, they result to violence or they result to attacking you personally. But just deal with the truth, deal with the facts, you know, prove me wrong, prove it wrong instead of getting all emotional and wanting to attack. And when you're calm and you're, emo you're not operating off of emotions, because emotions can be dangerous, because energy in motions, when you feel a certain way about someone or a thing, you want to hurt them or you want to, you know what I mean, like I mentioned in my last video, you want to attack them. You want to make up lies, you want to slander, you want to gossip, you want to, do you know what I mean, attack them. But you don't deal with the truth, the facts, what's about, deal with it. Because it's not going anywhere, you know. So yeah, I kind of digressed a bit, but I hope that answered the question. Does the shop have books to teach Hebrew? All the books teach you languages as you're reading them. This is another thing. So when you're reading the books, and people that have got books will uh, attest to this, the master would write phrases in English, translate it, whether it's Arabic, Hebrew, um, whatever language, it will give you the version and then give you the mistranslation as well. So you can compare, you can do a comparative analysis and then get a dictionary, you know, get an etymology dictionary. You can get them online as well now, so you can check words out, cross-reference, so that you know and no one is pulling the wool over your eyes and telling you, this means this. You're like uh, Elohim. You're translating it to God, singular, but Elohim is plural because of the Yod and the Mim in Hebrew. So this is how we've learned the languages as well as us learning the language Anyway, he taught, we, we were taught Arabic, we were taught Hebrew, you know, we were taught, um, you know, what people call the metoneta or like dealing with the hieroglyphics, which is really uh, the safuf, okay? Not sahuf, uh, the sahuf is the pure pages, the books that are not even mentioned in the Bible, the pages that were given to Adam and given to other people, you know, so... Yes, you learn all the languages, then you learn our language, of course, which is the root language where all languages come from. And with language, you've got to remember there's phonetics and then there's scripts. A script would be relating to how that language is written. So the hieroglyphs are what people call the metoneta and the um, cuneiform or the cuneiform, the wedge-shaped wedge script, these were scripts of the spoken language, Nuapik, or Misbatia, you know, so the phonetics is, are very important because the, 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 the Negroid women spoke first. They were given a larynx or a voice box 54,000 years ago, right? And then the male spoke after that. Then other races and beings were, they were, they, they were trying 9,000 years ago they were then trying to pronounce the tones of our language, but because they couldn't pronounce the tones properly, dialects and different phonetics started to come about, you know, and then obviously the Adamites, they only learned to speak and they were grunting like 6,000 years ago. So even with language, you have to do the study of, okay, where you speak in English, where did English come from? Where did that language come from? And where did that come from? All the way back to what is the first language on the planet? You know, and depending on how far back you go, you're going to get the answer. And you will find out that Miss Batia or Nawapik, our language is that language. And it, you know, like for example, there's certain tones that, <laughs> there's certain tones that you can't translate into English or people that don't have the ability to do it will then give you a different sound. So, for example, the P became the, 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 the P came out of the B, you know, the K 
um, came out of the Q, you know, so you can hear ka, ka, k. You see, phonetics are important. And so when we're learning and reading the books, we're taught the languages. The, the, the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, is a linguist. He studied languages and speaks pretty much every language on the planet. Some say 19 just to give you a number. And so you can see that in the videos when he's speaking, he, he goes fluently between Arabic and Hebrew and other tongues. And once you know the root, it's easy to see where the branches and the leaves come from. So the other languages will have certain words that they will see in our language and they will try to say, we are getting it from them when it's actually the other way around. So yes, that's a, a good question. Yes, you do learn Hebrew in the language. We are belief. This is someone called at Nasty Badger TN4 Kale. We, I don't know who the we is, we are belief-based life forms. We evolved because we started to remember things. It happened because belief, read only memory, but it reached a limit. We are hitting the ceiling now. See, this is, this is chaos. That's confusion. You can always tell when there's confusion because, one, it's not a question, it's a statement. And when you say we, we don't know who the we, because not everybody belongs to the we that you may be speaking about. We are belief-based life forms. There are many life forms that I don't believe at all. And what life forms are you talking about? We deal with facts. This is how confusion comes in because people will tell you things like this. We are belief-based life forms. We evolved because we started to remember things. We, we, we were evolving and will evolve regardless. And um, we will evolve regardless. So... Um, I'm just saying, like, don't make statements and, and it's like you're preaching now. We are belief-based life and we evolved because we started to remember things. It happened because belief read only memory, but it reached a limit. We are hitting the ceiling now. Um, excuse me, I'm just going to call. Um, yeah, so what I'm saying is this is how confusion is created and how People will try and preach and put a narrative. There are no references, no facts, no, like, it's just a statement, an open-ended statement that you're making. This is about ask a question and ask us anything. But I know some people try to utilise the platform to, I see people trying to advertise their stuff on there and in the comments and stuff like that. This will, this is to be expected by those vibrating under those types of 6 e for um, vibrations. Um, so what I will do is move on to the next um, question. Um, peace, what are Wu Sabat's thoughts on the 5% nation, nation of gods and earths and the teachings of Allah, the Father, a.k.a. Clarence 13X. You see, again, um, we know where the 5% come from. This goes back to the nation of Islam and people breaking off and forming, you know, they have an ideology or they accept something and don't accept something, so they roll with what they want to roll with. And what they teach, as in Clarence 13X being God and your god and goddesses that's that's facts you know because they didn't want to worship or you know what i mean channel their energy to someone and something else which is great because at least you're recognizing your god yourself however as i mentioned before truth is truth and it's about with what's about it's about raising you and teaching you and taking you from where you're at to a higher level of love and unity and coming together on the facts. And when you start to break down, whether it's the nation of Islam or the five percenters, um, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, all of these fall under the realm of religion because they all have a one person that they're saying is God or they have a book. And when you research and study each one of these, 
you will go back to the source or the original where they originated from. And in the case of Islam, that's going back to the Arabs. It's an Arabian religion. The same with Christianity, you're dealing with Greeks and you're dealing with Greeks and Romans. And um, other religions will go back to like the Hindus. Every, or when you're dealing with like the more recent ones, like the Mormons with Joseph Smith, that obviously goes to, again, Caucasians. Everyone has a culture and a, a, a messenger that is sent to them. For us, Wusabat is the way. And all these religions, all, all these organizations, they actually broke off from other organizations, as I've already explained. So if you took those who are teaching actual facts, teaching right knowledge, from all of these different religions and put it together, that would be a part of Wu Sabat. So we welcome anyone and everyone who's teaching facts and teaching truth. Um, and you can break down, you know, things that in a way that makes sense. Because if you take the Nation of Islam, for example, um, with W. Fahd Muhammad as who they call God, you do the research, um, you, you know, he was not a full African or a Negroid. So that means the genes or genetics have been weakened. So when you're dealing with the 5% who broke off from the Nation of Islam and like you have now, say, Minister Louis Farrakhan, you had his son, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son, Wallace, um, who also broke off. So you just had different sects that broke off from the Nation of Islam. But when you go back to the Nation of Islam, as I said, they go back even to like noble Jew Ali, and it goes back to, to Arabs. We are African um, in terms of, if you want to use that term, in terms of the race, and um, you know, we need to come back together as one. So my thoughts are, let's unite, let's come together as one family. Um, we, we, we have a poster actually called We Are Family, that the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, put out many years ago. Google it now. Re research you will see it's called We Are Family, the Nubian Nation. And it has Clarence 13X on there. It has Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Oliver Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey. It's got um, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Noble Drew Ali, if I haven't mentioned him already, um, Father Divine. It's got um, Haley Selassie. Um, obviously it's got the lamb, Dr. Malachi Z. York. Um, I'm just going off the top of my head, but literally all our family who have tried to help us as a people in terms of our liberation and waking us up. We as the Nubian nation um, of Wu Sabat, our job is to bring the family together, you know, so we can be more powerful and work together and put away the differences in terms of ideologies and doctrines because at the end of the day, we have to face survival from oppressors. We have to face how do we be, raise ourselves to be the great beings that we once were and be respected in terms of our works and what we're doing. That's why I say many people can teach and give information, but can you build communities? Can you build a culture? Can you build like Dr. York has done with the many communities that he has built over the years? Um, up to the last one from, from Bushwick Avenue, you know, um, to the Catskill Mountains, to, to Georgia, to our 476 acres of land where we were welcoming to everyone, you know, and you were able to experience that, that greatness that we once had on your own land, speaking your own language, with your own buildings and structures, the pyramids, able to perform certain rituals that hadn't been done in over 10,000 years. Um, so you don't just talk Egypt, you actually live it, you know. Um, you don't just give out information, but you know the, the sacred practices, the rituals and how they affect and where you're going. You know, so this, this is a big difference and this is why we're saying 
let's put away the childish games of I know more than you, I'm this, I'm that. Let's just come together and unite and work together and help humanity through this transition and evolution that we're on. Um, okay, what's this? Is there a way to get videos or recordings of Baba? It says this in other than YouTube. I think, t I think it may be, is there a way to get the videos or recordings of Baba teaching other than YouTube? Um, yeah, there are many videos that are on what in the past DVDs, CDs. Um, so yeah, you may be able to get hold of those. People can download and put them onto USB sticks now. So yeah, there are ways. Um, can spirit ghosts harm you? If someone says they see spirits in a house, but you don't see anything, how can you tell if they truly if they're truly there? If spirits occupy a residence, how do you get them out? Yes, spirit can harm you, it's ghost. Yes, because um, even though they don't have a physical body, they can um, they can project or make things fall or, you know, send energy towards things and, um, yeah, they can move doors. They can, it depends on how developed that spirit is in terms of its capability. Um, yes, other people have developed enough to be able to see them or personify them because um, the visible spectrum is it's only between 400 and to 700 nanometers. And there is a spectrum outside of that that you may not see, but others have developed enough to see a wider range. Um, and some people have the ability to see auras, to see beings. And um, just because you can't see it doesn't mean they can't. Um, and to get rid of them, there are many things you can do. Um, you can burn white sage. You can put salt um, Again, these are the things what I'm saying that once you're on the inside, you get a lot of information, but some of these are quite public anyway. So you can put salt, mirrors um, facing your windows outwards. You can put salt at the entries of your house, the doors and things like that um, in a discreet way. And there's a science be, you know, behind all these things as well, because um, you know, spirits and um, the, that realm there are rules that govern each realm and things you can or cannot do within that realm. Just like here, for example, you know, people will talk about gravity in this realm, but in the spiritual realm, there are also rules um, of can and cannot do. But um, yeah, you can chant, you can, you can basically make the environment conducive for for you so another way of explaining this simply is that if let's say you're not a smoker and um, a room was constantly occupied or filled with with smoke you would feel very uncomfortable in that room right so if i didn't want to be around that environment i would leave this is what you have to do by sometimes it's a complete transformation in terms of the colors that you have in the room certain vib certain colors have different vibrations so you know you have pure white which is quite you know spiritual as is as is as is blue um yellow is more like intellectual red is kind of agitating and very um lower vibration and this this ties into sound frequency and vibration we have a actual fact called feeding the forces that you can get hold of. We have another one called um, um, DNA tones and vibrational frequencies. Um, we have one called a ghost. We have many scrolls that actually attack and tackle this subject of disembodied spirits that are roaming the planet and looking for hosts um, to, to utilize to experience this physical world because they no longer have a a body um, and the only way they can experience it to burn out their desires that are the reason why they're trapped here is to utilize you or you know there's something that may have occurred in that environment that has stamped them 
like for example, if there was a murder or something, a horrific um, incident that took place while, when that goes past, they stand there so they keep revisiting. And not, normally you will see that if it would be like said an anniversary or when that took place. So there are many, many reasons and different reasons why you may have hosts that are unwanted and there are ways to um, ask them to leave or persuade them to leave. Watch the movie Ghost, Ghost Town. That kind of helps as well to give you a good kind of visual representation of, of what I'm saying. Also watch the movie called The Presence. That will help. Okay, um, I still have an original copy of The Holy Tablets. Would you suggest that I buy scrolls or just continue to read The Holy Tablets? Both. I mean, read The Holy Tablets and master it. Um, it's a lot of information. It's actually the completion of religion um, in terms of what the Bible, Quran and all these religious books were trying to accomplish is what the Holy Tablets does. It expresses what they were trying to express, but it then brings to an end or an, an expiration of religion. And then the hereafter doctrine, which is referred to as the Partarak, Partaruk, actual facts, master's secret, and the many other scrolls that the master teacher Pana Babyanun has written, you need those to take you to the next level. See, people get stuck in schools and in religions, like I'm a Muslim, so I remain in the Quran all my life and don't elevate and don't want to learn anything outside of that. That stagnates to you, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't elevate. The same with, I'm a Christian, I, I read the same quotes when I go to church every week, the same books. I don't read the whole book in, it, in its entirety from the beginning to the end. I just regurgitate and read and get sermons of the same stories over and over again. And you're stuck. And the same now with the Holy Tablets where people, they get the Holy Tablets and it's like, it takes you back to the seven to six trillion years ago. And it gives you a breakdown from then till now, covers everything on the planet gives you all the Sumerian doctrine, gives you all the Egyptian stuff, it covers the, even the, the Hindu doctrine, everything is in the Holy Tablets, but then it brings it to a, a, a closure, and then you move on to what we call the hereafter doctrine. Yeah, so definitely get the new scrolls, but yeah, continue to read the Holy Tablets as well. That you have a lot of factual information in there. Most people haven't even mastered that one Holy Tablets, and... Some people have not even read it, considering, I mean, in its entirety. People just jump around and just, but they don't read it from beginning to end, and you should, um, because it, it, it has a lot of information, but then move on. Um, and let me just say something else, and it doesn't mean you have to read that before you can move on. If you've never had the Holy Tablets and never read it, you're just coming into Wusabat today, then focus on part of that actual facts, master secret, and, and, and then read around anything else you can get your hands on from the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, because, you know, there's so much information he has um, bestowed on the world that I would say read as many and as much as possible. Um, the true, what's this? The true name and meaning of Jesus, is it? as it is pronounced, or has it been translated incorrectly? It's been tr in tr translated incorrectly, um, and it depends where you're translating it from, what language, because if it's the Old Testament, then that will be the, the Hebrew, and Hebrew doesn't have J's or V's, so you, you would replace the J with a Y, which becomes Yeshua. Some people mispronounce it and say Yahushua and all kinds of names, but the thing is that these are stories that were copied from stories that were copied from stories, and some of them are made up stories. Um, so the question is, did he even exist? You have to first prove he existed before getting into the arguments of what's the name and so on. But yeah, if you want to just you know, deal with the name phonetically, yeah, it would be Yahshua. Um, 
and it has been mistranslated into Ja Zeus, then became Jesus. Remember what I said about phonetically, because you're dealing with Ja from Yah, from Yahweh, uh, Yahuwah, to Zeus, dealing with the, the Greek god Zeus, and putting them together, you get Ja Zeus, became Jesus, or Gases, which is dealing with the sixth ether being, all right? Um, if Jesus is not who they've been saying he is, why do people who are possessed get affected when they say in the name of Jesus? In addition, was Jesus ever crucified? And lastly, is there some people who was chosen by God here on earth or we all the same? Um, just because they're possessed doesn't mean it has anything to do with Jesus. As I've explained, you can be possessed by disembodied spirits. And um, because you're saying the name doesn't mean that's what's happening. And there are beings, extraterrestrial beings, that camouflage, personify in people's dreams, take on form in your dreams and pass themselves off as the image that they have given you as Jesus. Jesus was never crucified as when you study the stories um, and you have to read not just the Bible, but other books that go into the parts that are, not, that are left out in the Bible. So um, in, the, in the Quran, for example, it carries on with the story and it tells you he was not crucified. It was, it was um, Judas that was crucified because Jesus had the ability to do something called, um, uh, what's the word, when you transform yourself, he had the ability to do that, to make himself look like, like that. So that whole story, I mean, it's a deep story, but if you read a lot of the books that we have that cover the, the life and times of Jesus, it will cover that. Um, and you're chosen as in the fact that if you are doing the right things, living in truth, who is God's people? Which God are you talking about? This is another way of keeping us in the spell. Because the minute you continue to perpetrate these gods, Jesus, these names, it's like without breaking them down and going into detail of what we're talking about, you still have people in a religious mindset. I know you spoke about the guardians of the galaxy. You also spoke about when one will be attacked. If the powers that be have the power to kill people that are stepping up, why won't the guardians of the galaxy step in or whom really holds all the power? Again, that's a, that's a very confusing question, but I get what you're saying. That's like saying you don't have to do anything. Every single person, whether it was Jesus, Muhammad, um, I mentioned so many people, Mark MX, Martin Luther King, um, Noble Drew Ali, the list goes on, even till this day, um, with Dr. York, with Yahweh Ben Yahweh, with Terence Howard, with even, I mentioned Andrew Tate, Bill Carson, whoever, when you start to um, teach, that don't mean that there aren't negative forces and people on the planet that are going to attack you. Um, just because you're attacked doesn't mean that you're not going to prevail. Um, but yeah, name, name anybody who has come to the planet, whoever you call you know, a deity that has not been attacked or, you know, try, or they try to harm them because you've got the natures, the two sides, um, and the ga ga guardians of the galaxy, they, they, have, they do help. And this is what we're saying, that connect with your ancestors and they have work to do. They guard in the galaxies. They have a lot of work they're already doing um, and they do step in and step in whom really holds the power. The story is not over. You know, it's like you're watching a movie and you're thinking it's over, but you know, you've got, there's always a, mid, a beginning, a middle and an end. And we're not at the end yet because this is a process. You know, we're evolving and time is of the essence. There is an urgency and it's down to you to um, elevate yourself, 
and be on the right side. People call this Armageddon, Jihad, or the, the, you know, the fight between good and bad, or agreeable and disagreeable. And when the story is over, that's when you see who has prevailed, because this goes on in different parts of you know, the galaxies, and beings will relocate and go somewhere else and start the mischief, and then the war has to take place. Because as I said before, if you had a white, pristine um, room and you wanted to keep it that way, if beings or people came in there and tried to mess it up, you're going to do what you need to do to get rid of them, all right? And that's what's happening now through natural nature, through the fertility rate, through people dying out, people not being able to reproduce, through the sun attacking people, nature attacking people. And um, yeah, they, it's happening naturally. The evolution is taking place and the revolution will not be televised. All right, I'm going to come to the end now. Um, the, speaking of, the speaking in tongue part one, I find slightly naive. Sound is the most powerful thing if one invokes higher thoughts and in an innate pattern action it can have profound spiritual effect in the path of one's life i know this that's another very is that a question what we're speaking in tongues um yeah tones yeah that's what we're saying like just because you're uttering a tone or a sound doesn't mean it's going to be conducive or positive or good for you there are negative sounds or sounds that can cause destruction and there are sounds that are positive so just because you're saying that sound is profound spiritual effect not every sound if i if i take um you know some people have the ability to make a sound on a particular frequency that will um, crack a glass or destroy a glass and shatter it um is is that positive and, you know, some people are able to get a guitar and, and create sounds that you might find, find agitating and they're not resonating with you as a being. So the point you're making is that, yes, sound can be used and invoked in a positive or in a negative way. All right. So because you're being possessed by a disembodied spirit and you're making... This disturbing sounds doesn't mean it's good for you. Um, I had a dream before I was made of bright light and was at war with dimmer light beings. Does it mean anything? Your dreams are your dreams and um, messages for you. However, what that relates to in terms of what you've said, if you read the Holy Tablets, it explains about the green light and the amber light. And these are in opposition to each other. So um, the green light is nature, healing, vibrant, heat is a good vibration. The amber light is, as I said, adverse to that. It can be used in a destructive manner, you know, because when you look at light, light has different colours and, and that's tying into the, the different sounds and the different vibrations. So, yeah, you can use... Um, light in a positive way, but your dream is really for you and eventually you you kind of decipher it for yourself Okay, um, I think we've come to the end um, I'll take I'll take a few more um, Question about mediums you talked about souls being torched can you explain what you meant and can we help with ascending our ancestors? Oh, I, I think you mean tortured. Um, yeah, I was referring to your ancestors who may have been trapped because they didn't make it. And you have, just like on the physical, on this um, realm, you have disagreeable beings that will, like I was saying, ridicule people, enslave people, imprison people, torture people for whatever reason, it could be because of wars, disagreements. It's the same on different realms where your ancestors could be trapped by these disembodied entities and held to ransom because they know that they will try to help you on this physical world. Um, so what you have to be able to do is 
raise yourself so that you can then, through your morphogenetic field and through your resonance, be able to help them. Yes, and he says you can help, yeah, you can help them with ascending by freeing them. So it's important for you to arm yourself, equip yourself with the spiritual energy and power that you can utilize to help them. Do we always come back to our same family during our 24 to 24,000 cycles we have if we don't make the grade? I already answered that question. I'm going to take this last question. Peace and love from Botswana, Africa. My question is about ear ringing for some months now. I have been having this low volume, mid to high pitched ringing in both my ears. My audiometric readings are normal and there is no pain or discomfort associated with the ringing. What I want to know is, is there any spiritual significance of ear ringing? And if there is, what is it? Okay, so that's going to be the last question for today. Again, the book Man from Planet Risk explained and spoke about people that have holes in their ears and people that hear these ringing. You've already ex um, excluded the fact that it's nothing to do with your hearing because sometimes people might have an issue with their hearing, um, their eardrum, etc. However, in the Man from Planet Risk book, the Master explained that there are beings, and I've also touched on this, there are beings in crafts above the planet that, as I said, they use the, the clouds and they camouflage themselves. And you can read a book called um, um, Mystery Clouds, Are There UFOs in Our Midst? That goes into this, right? And they can beam and send certain frequencies to scan certain people, um, especially if you're one of their... I'll just say int they're interested in you in some way, shape or form, or you're, you're, you're one of those beings that they're waiting to take away. Um, they will scan you from time to time to make sure that you're, you haven't contacted any diseases um, because again, they can't take you with you, take you with them um, if, if you've defiled yourself to a point where you will have an, a negative effect on others or where they're taking you. Some extraterrestrials, before someone says it, they're advanced enough to be able to cure you and replace certain things like we were saying about replacing your barotry gland through the submental. I explained that on the previous video. So the, the ear ringing could be anything. It could be the heart project. It could be, you know, they're, they're sending all types of frequencies at the moment. You have the 5G networks. So without really speculating on your particular instance I'm um, just giving you you know cer certain information based on what the master teacher Parnabab Yanun Dr Malachi Ziyok has taught us about people hearing you know the ringing um, some people are special beings that will be utilized when the time comes to warn others you know because um, just like the story of Nibiru Nibiru was sending out certain frequencies telepathically to influence people on the planet to behave in a particular way. This is much what's happening with radio waves and with microwaves and with infrared and the different types of waves on the electromagnetic spectrum that can affect you negatively, which is why it's good to kind of remove ions from your body and get your health um, both physically, mentally and spiritually in order. But yes, so until the next episode, as usual, I want to thank everyone. Please remember to like your questions so that they can move to the top. Subscribe. Hit that bell button so that you will be alerted and notified when the next episodes come out. Join our classes every Saturday from 7pm to 9.30pm on Zoom, Clubhouse and physically at the store. Nashat.co.uk gives you all the information. Hit the connect us button. You can also listen to all the radio shows, the podcast on the Nashat.co.uk, N-A-S-H-A-T.co.uk. Hit the podcast button and listen to all our shows because we try as much as possible to constantly break down, woo sabat, 
share this good news with as many people as possible so that we can raise the consciousness of humanity in preparation for the next 24,000 year cycles. Until the next time, peace, love and unity. Wadu.